Hello, my name is Birte Höcker and I work at the Max Planck Institute for Developmental Biology in Tübingen, Germany. In my group, we are interested in the design of proteins. In particular, we are interested in how to build new folded proteins and how to design a protein's functionality such as small molecule binding or enzymatic function. Today, I will talk about the construction of proteins from smaller fragments. This approach is based on considerations about the evolution of complex proteins. So when we look at protein structures, we can identify parts that form distinct entities, separately folding units called domains. The same type of domain can be found in very different contexts, like the TIM or beta-alpha-8 barrel shown here in the abstract pictures of the pyruvate kinase and enolase structures. Based on observations, it is commonly understood that proteins evolve through the recruitment of domains. When we look at the domains themselves, we can distinguish smaller fragments from which the domains are built up. The smaller units are obvious in repeat proteins, but were also identified in globular domains, such as TIM barrels that are hypothesized to have evolved from an ancestral half through gene duplication and fusion. So we have quite some indication that domains themselves evolved through the recruitment of smaller fragments. For example, thinking of the half barrel as being a structural unit, we were expecting to see it in other protein contexts. And when we went looking, I found a compelling structural similarity of a half barrel to proteins of the flavadoxin-like fold. So the half barrel is shown in blue, and the flavadoxin-like fold is shown in green. A comparison of the topology models of both structures shows an extra alpha beta element after beta 1, where in the symmetric tim barrels there is a long loop of almost the same length. But in fact, it is the part that is boxed in red that is really superimposing nicely, as can be appreciated in the cartoon figure that depicts the overlay of the C-terminal fragment of the protein HIS-F, which stands for imidazole glycerol phosphate synthase from histidine biosynthesis, and the flavadoxin-like domain of methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. In the depiction on the right, you can see how the same fragment is fixed in a very different context. In the barrel, the hydrophobic interior is shielded through the second half, while in the flavadoxin-like fold, shielding is achieved through the first and last alpha helices that fold onto the other side of the beta sheet, thereby creating a three-layered fold. Now we were wondering whether we could use nature's recruitment approach to design and construct new proteins from fragments that originate from different folds. So what we tried next is that we then used this fragment that is so similar from the flavadoxin-like fold, namely the QI protein, which is a response regulator, and placed it into the HIS-F context. So we built a chimera made from QI and HIS-F. We also built an analogous chimera using the nitrite response regulator NAL and made a similar chimera called nal HIS-F. And in the lower part now, you see the biophysical characterization of these cameras. On the left-hand side, there is a gel filtration run, which shows that all proteins, the qy his f camera, nial his f in comparison to his f themselves, they all show nice single peaks, indicating that these are monomeric and well-folded proteins. In the next graph, you see unfolding studies with the same proteins, where we checked how stable these proteins are. And so you can see nice cooperative unfolding of qy his f as well as nael his f and they compare well to the thermophilic his f protein so they are considerably stable and they seem to be very well folded so we really wanted to know now what these proteins look like on a molecular level so we tried to solve the structures of these proteins and in the case of qy his f we succeeded using x-ray crystallography and you can see on the right hand side a cartoon model of the qy his f protein Colored in green is a part that originates from the flavadoxin fold, QY, and in colored in blue, you can see the HIS-F part. Then you actually see one strand that is colored in red. This strand was a total surprise to us because it actually is the C-terminal end of our HIS-F protein that integrates in between beta strand 1 and beta strand 2 of the QY part. So this protein actually looks slightly different than what we expected. On this slide, you can now appreciate the similarities and differences of our QYSF chimera to the crystal structures of the parent protein. So on the left-hand side, you have his F, and on the middle, you have his F, the his F part superimposed on the QYSF, almost not visible because the parts are so similar. They superimpose below one angstrom RMSD. What's very nice to see is that the part of his F, which actually harbors a phosphate binding site, um, contains this binding site also in the chimeric context. So in our qy -HSF chimera, we found a sulfate ion in, in exactly the same binding site, showing to us that this fragment still carries its functional ability. 
So on the right hand side you see the QI parent and when you superimpose this onto the QISF it also superimposes very nicely. There's only the shift of this very one, uh, the very first beta strand, which is replaced by the ninth strand of the chimera. And where is this ninth strand really coming from? It actually comes from the C-terminal end of the HIS-F protein. Four residues of the strand coming from the C-terminus, and then the last three residues are from a purification tag that we did not cut off. And this sequence is not very typical for beta strands, so it was really amazing to see that this can sneak into this fold and basically rescue our structure. So we were wondering whether the ninth strand is really absolutely crucial for the integrity of the fold, and so we cut off these residues and looked whether our protein would still be folding correctly. It was not. It had actually tended to uh, aggregate um, very much. And so we were wondering what we could do in order to optimize this structure to form a proper eight-stranded barrel. So while we were seeing that the fragments retained their structural integrity, it seemed that the interface was not optimal. And in order to optimize this, we used the computational program Rosetta in order to optimize our protein. So the approach was that we first made a model of an eight-stranded barrel that we used as an input structure that we had generated through homology modeling. Then we applied Rosetta design in order to optimize this model structure, and we selected mutations that improved the energy of this qy -his -f without the strand-forming residues, so qy -his -f sfr we constructed this protein, um, we, we constructed the, um, the gene and expressed the protein and then analyzed it again with gel filtration and unfolding. And you can see this here now in the lower left, the gel filtration run. You can see a very nice single peak, indicating again a nicely well-folded monomeric protein. What is obvious here also is that this protein eludes later from the column, indicating that this protein is more compact than the original qy -his -f. Then we analyzed the protein also using gonadinium hydrochloride unfolding in order to test how stable it is and whether it um, unfolds cooperatively. And you can see here that QISF with the Rosetta mutations is much more stable than the original QISF chimera. So now we also wanted to see how well this protein is folded and how exactly these mutations are contributing uh, into this structure and whether it's really a nicely formed eight-stranded barrel. And unfortunately, we could not get any crystals that diffracted well enough, but because this protein is so stable, we could use NMR spectroscopy in order to solve the, the structure. And here on the right-hand side, you actually see a superposition of the NMR structure with the design model, and you can see that this superimposes very nicely. And when we look deeper into these mutations, we actually see that in most cases we are resolving clash, small clashes, and we know that we actually need all of the five mutations in order to improve the structure of this chimera. So we can now sum up our experiments in this graph and showing that we can take a QI or NIL fragment and place it into his F. We can use this recombination approach from nature and build new stable proteins. Then we can use computational design in order to optimize a new interface. And we can actually also see, and I haven't showed you this here, but we can use the fragment properties of our, um, of our fragments in order to adapt for new functionalities. For example, the phosphate binding site that we carried over from the HISF protein, we were able to optimize binding to a new ligand. Um, and so we actually see that there is potential for the design of new proteins with new functionalities using full fragments. We can also take some evolutionary considerations out of this experiment. We can we look at our nine-stranded barrel as if it's a hopeful monster that could, in theory, lead to, new, uh, to the emergence of new protein folds, which might have actually have happened in the course of evolution, but we usually don't see these proteins because they will converge back to a typical beta-alpha-8 barrel fold because this might be more stable. And this we call a futile cycle. 